You're listening to the Youth Creek Podcast on KHZ Network. Find us on Facebook at Decibel UNG Radio and find us on Twitter at Decibel UNG. If you like this episode, please leave a like and comment on our iTunes page at KHZ Network. And now for the podcast. Four years ago, the exorcist shocked the world. Now, the struggle between good and evil goes on. Exorcist 2, The Heretic. Been ready, dude. We're playing. Oh, we're recording. We're, p- yeah, we're recording. That's how we do it. That is how we do that. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Youth Critic Retrospectives. I am your host, Kel Smith. Joining me today is Michael Benton. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Michael Benton, starring Philip Shadburn. I fucked that up. Uh, I think it's like welcome to the Philip. Michael show? I don't know. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Let's try that again. We've had so many podcasts, I don't know. Yeah, we'll get it right this time. We're not going to fuck uh, this uh, up. Uh, All right. Second time's a charm. Oh, we always got to let our song build because it's super cool and we have the permission to play it. I don't know about on this show, though. We didn't bring our cord. Nah. Kick it. I'm sure it'll be just fine. You're talking over the song. That's rude. You're listening to PMS with a Vengeance, starring me, Mike Mule. Me, Philip. And, uh, boy, howdy, do we got us a movie here today, Filthy Bill. Hell damn, we? yeah, we do. Goddamn old shit. Oh, uh, <laughs> fucking fuck, dude. Uh, you got, uh, me, <laughs> you got me, Michael. <laughs> she's, she's, she's a horse in the background. <laughs> <laughs> You're bad. I'm gonna uh, spank you. <laughs> I'm gonna spank you and thank you. Okay. Thank you for being my buddy. Th- You're welcome. I love you, man. I love you too. So and that's um, also Philip Shepard. Oh, and we got our host over here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, Kale Smith. Kale, Hostile takeover. Kale, what the heck's going on with you, good old brother? <laughs> well, um, I'm doing very well. well and uh, so really, I, what's going on in your life? Well, you know, just shit happening. Work, holidays. <sighs> Kevin Spacey, Hot. the Golden Globes. <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody winning a Golden Globe. That's good, right? Did that make you mad? No. Why is that not good? It's not a good movie. Oh, really? But Boy, he was, was he, if my roommate was in here. Was he good as Fredward Mercury? Yeah, it was all right. Do you like Queen? Yes, I do. Bohemian Rhapsody is like one of my favorite songs. What's your other favorite? What's a deep cut yeah. that you like? Um, Prove your fucking fandom. With a vengeance! <laughs> uh, bro. Starring me, Michael. Rock. What? Is, is it Brighton Rock? I, How's it go? Just kind of give us a little bit. I can't do this song on here. It's copyrighted. What? What? You know, I'll do it. You the- can sing us. Su- Believe sing me, it. they're not listening to this. Yeah. You can totally do this. <laughs> no, I no. Because just would you please? For I don't once, have, no, I'm You not actually ask. You yeah. ask the listeners to listen to this show, and it's a good show. You cover a I lot of. Get up on the mic, please. I please. I don't know the lyrics. Just try getting I'm it. To the music. Just please, fucking Kale, get to it. I don't know what you're doing. I'm mumbling. <laughs> yeah, I love Stone that Cold song. Crazy. Oh, uh, Stone Cold crazy. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Another one bites the dust. I don't know that um, one. That's a deep cut. Uh, I want to break free. Well, just break free. Um. Don't Try Suicide. Did you ever hear that the one? The Highlander song. The fucked up song. Fat Bottom Girl. Flash Gordon. Ah, ah, I just died in your arms tonight. Well, I also want to add Something You Said. Something You the Said. The Big 52's version. Yeah. Some- <laughs> Fred Schneider. He's classic gay. Yeah, yeah. He's classic campy fucking Athens, Georgia. Look at Georgia. me, confetti. Zoom. Zoom. Zing, yeah, zing, yeah, zong. Yeah. Speaking you know. of Zoom, we are going to be talking about the return of... A Pazuzu. Oh, I thought you meant Durant. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
No, uh, so listeners, we are Jafar? going to be. <laughs> You're so uh, bad, Jesus. Thank you. Uh, we're thanks for getting that belt. We're going to need you. Yeah, drinking beer. So, uh, so I'm watching Captain Kangaroo after yeah. um, last week's controversial episode. Oh, controversial! I like how you got that out. What happened? Uh, so, okay, so let me inform the listener. So, uh, for the last week, we have been talking about the Exorcist movies. Uh, last week, I had Justin Mayhew and... All yeah, Justin talk- Mayhew, and what was he talking about? We were talking <laughs> about The Exorcist, and he had a very... It's a really scary one. <coughs> and he had a very stout bullshit. opinion. It's a bullshit. A very strong hot take against uh, The Exorcist, where he talked about you know, how the film kind of promoted... Capitalism. Well, that. <laughs> and for those of you who aren't on uh, Justin Mayhew's Facebook, <laughs> he's an anarcho-communist. If that makes sense. I don't know. I don't know. He's I'm keeping pooper. all this in because the it all makes sense when you watch the Exorcist movies, when you compare The Exorcist and Exorcist 2, which we are talking about today. Oh, why? Is this the shittier episode of the two? <laughs> <laughs> Gazinga! No, because we are completely different from what we, from the original. In so, every way. So what did old fucking fucking poohead have to say <laughs> about his... And don't you edit that out. That stays in. All right? I love well, I Justin like a to. brother. I wasn't going to chop in. just bringing some out. shock to the jock. <laughs> uh, so Justin, just, <laughs> Justin didn't love it because it, kind of, it promoted... Kind of brought capitalism to light and brought kind of... He did actually talk about capitalism? No, not, no. I'm sorry. I oh, I was say, like, oh, uh, I was right. I was oh, right. Catholicism. Because the not like not Catholicism in particular, but exorcism and also kind of which is I mean, it, this is a Catholic series, right? Yeah. Uh, also, well, I wouldn't say pro-Catholic. I guess it's not a Catholic <laughs> series. The Pope, I bless this. <laughs> but also kind of created like the devil worshiping scare. That Th- that was the late on. '80s. That was the late '80s. Actually. That that was like because of like Ozzy and Motley Crue. Yeah, that wasn't from the '70s. Actually, that was uh, Tipper Gore and all that stuff. Which yeah. you 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 far lefties today are turning into little Tipper Gores. Tipper Gores I'd like to add. <sighs> well, we just can't help ourselves. Th- oh my God! This is offensive. Stop it! Take it away. It's Let's quiet. ban a song that was made 50 <laughs> yeah, years fuck, ago. It's about a fucking. But you're gonna hear about anal. <laughs> Right. So, it's a Christmas song. So, anywho, we are here to talk about The Exorcist 2. Um, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> yes, sir. The Exorcist 2, Cruise Control. The Exorcist 2, Die, Dark Man, Die. The Exorcist 2, Judgment Day. Ooh, the Scorpion Cat. The, the Mummy Returns. <laughs> the Exorcist Returns. Oh, God, we are so bad. Uh, remember to check us out. Uh, if you're loving this, uh, you're going to love our show, uh, PMS with a uh, PMS. An action movie podcast, otherwise known as PMS of the Vengeance. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, and anywhere you get your podcasts. All right, check it out. If you review us, you get a free. Uh, have you? Do you even PMS bro T-shirt? It's right nice there. looking. Oh, oh, go on. Free stuff. Please go on. Anyway. Please go on immediately. So after the oh, these... I'm so upset today, Phil. <sighs> <laughs> do you know like Mondays. the male period? You know what I mean? Where like once a month you kind of just do like Arr. yes, once a month. <laughs> so upset. I thought it was when you accidentally sit on your balls. Uh-huh. That's not like how Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> Did you ever hear that story? He sat on his ouch. Ball. <laughs> was that Alan Rickman? Yeah, ouch. As, yeah, ouch, my balls, <laughs> Mr. Palter. Uh, so anyway, after the success of Hans The Bloody. Exorcist in 1974. Uh, Starring me, Mike Mule. <laughs> me, Philip. <laughs> William Peter Blatty and William Freakton were offered to do the sequel to Freakin'. The Exorcist. However, they turned it down. Uh, William Freakton went on to do Sorcerer with Roy, Sh- Roy Sh- Schneider. William Peter Blatty went back to comedy writing for a little bit. And <laughs> William Peter Blatty was a comedy writer? <laughs> oh, yeah. He wrote uh, comedy before he... Uh, well, what comedy did he write? He wrote... Uh, I think for Peter Gunn, the Blake Edwards show. James Gunn's dad. No, probably not, actually. <laughs> uh, anyway, so with that said, Warner Brothers was like in high demand for an Exorcist follow-up. That was fucking huge, man. My oh, dad you told no me. Idea. My, yes, I do. My dad. Yes, I That's do yours. actually because I know film. Um. <laughs> anyways, um, my dad told me that he saw that movie in theaters, right, in Boston in uh, 1974, and that people were standing up and leaving. Like he said, husbands were grabbing their wives. We're getting the fuck out of here. This is <laughs> disgusting. It's a Catholic town. People were horribly offended. Yeah. That movie. I thought it was banned in Boston. 
Might have eventually been. Okay. There's a lot of things banned in Boston. Did it never play in Boston? Because that would be hilarious if my dad made that up. Uh, it probably did, but okay. eventually probably, maybe like after a day or two got banned. I was going to say, don't call my daddy a liar. Okay. My daddy don't lie. I know it got banned That's Phil. here, I th- believe. It got banned in Georgia, I think. In Georgia, I A. Probably. But the film... So yeah, after the success of the film, despite <sighs> bannings and whatnot, um, yeah. they were hot and they were hot in need of a sequel. And uh, oh no, sequel time! And their follow up was, "Hey, let's get the guy who did Deliverance and Zardos, John Borman." Both John good Borman movies. Hold on, no. Well, Deliverance. John Borman. Like, but... How the? Yeah, I think he went from Deliverance. Into Zardoz. Jesus Christ. And that is a very, very odd shift to make. Because Deliverance is legit one of the great movies. Yeah. Like, like especially Ned Beatty. I mean, everybody in it. It's a powerhouse fucking film. Ronnie Cox. Fucking Burt. Burt, obviously. Burp Reynolds. Uh, 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 Angelina. And we lost J- half the listeners. Jolie. Her, her daddy was in it or William something? Hurt. William John Voight, Hurt, yeah. Fucking William Peter Blatty was John in Leguizamo. it. John Leguizamo. John Leguizamo. He was like, you can't catch me. Yeah, he, he was. Ran. Jeffrey it, Jones it, was chasing him and some other toddlers. Why is he so obsessed with catching that young teenager? Oh, that's why. We figured out 30 years later. That's Man, that really ruined Jeffrey Jones. I know, Kale. I know. Oh, no, I'm sad. Oh. Anyway. Well, I got some that'll cheer you up. Exorcist 2, The Heretic. Yes! So, yes. <laughs> so, uh, so, like the first movie, which also had a like terrible a production. This also had a horrible production as well, going through multiple drafts. Yep. Uh, originally, yep. the script was supposed to call, do you remember uh, the Kinnerman uh, character from the first movie? I he was a detective. Yeah. He yeah, was he uh, was supposed to. So the sequel was supposed to re- revolve around him and another uh, Catholic priest, and they were going to go and investigate the uh, the exorcisms performed by Father Marin. And now this is End of Days with Arnold, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so you watched the right movie. Okay. okay so yeah. the problem was Yikes. Uh, Lee J. Cobb, the actor who played. Detective Kinderman had a heart attack in 1975. So Got they hit with the old invisible sledgehammer in the chest. So they <laughs> had to. So they had to rewrite the script. Uh, they brought in another writer in William G- Goldherd. Gold- I'm William Goldherd. And I'm sorry if I butchered that. And yeah, and well, they rewrote. <laughs> you did. Yeah. So they rewrote it, and then they brought John Borman on, even though he very much did not like The Exorcist. Why? What was his reason? Because uh, I love... First off, I just want to say for the record, the first one is a bona fide classic. It's one of the great horror films. I was getting... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fucking fantastic. I don't know what your little buddy last week's guest said, he but... He did like the movie. It was just that was his kind of takeaway, is that he kind of did start... Get the ball snowball effect rolling on the... Oh, so he's blaming art for society 20 years later blaming Imagine art. Imagine that. No, that makes no sense. That's an irrational viewpoint to take, and I'll tell you why. I don't know. Art's pretty powerful. Yes, it is, but why would you blame... So the fuck what? When somebody mm. flips out over art, the art is one of those like rare occasions where it's like, I'm 100% free speech all the way, baby. Like the, Most of my day is normally spent telling people they're not allowed to speak. I try and silence my I feel opponents. like I'm the Warner Brothers executive back in 1975 right now. What are you I'm doing? I'm loving every bit of this. Coke. Yeah, well, did. that. All right, no, it's, it's the mid-70s. It's probably more like lewds. We're still yeah. knocking around. Uppers, downers. Uppers, Wait, downers. Uh, all-arounders. Yeah. Phil, thanks for getting that burp in, babe. You're welcome. <laughs> um, Yeah, but that first one's really dang old good, and uh, I don't know what I Justin like May Pugues really loved... was talking about. Okay. <laughs> I May really love the first one as well. So <laughs> At me, Justin. At me. <laughs> I love the first one as well, and I... Really love, and I actually like the sequel. The squeakle? This? this? Yes. The heretic? You yes. liked this. The squeakle. You now have to spend the rest of the time we're sat here explaining why. Okay. You yeah. This well, pile of fucking, this 
pile 17 of percent. fucking <laughs> shit. <laughs> Garbage movie. Hey, but Linda Blair's back. Yeah, great. Yeah, she's a problem. We'll get to that. Fucking chipmunk cheeks. Her in uh Movies Fletcher Fletcher is wasted in this movie. Yeah. Fletcher. Richard Burton sucks in this. Really? I th- Okay, we'll get Richard to Burton this. is awful in this movie. Richard Burton is like barely <laughs> taped together. He sucks. <laughs> James Earl Jones. <laughs> and this is Richard Burton. I yeah. mean, you know, he was a fantastic actor of the old guard. He was in Cleopatra. It, James Earl Jones exactly. is in it. James Earl Jones is in it, and it that's, reminds me of uh, uh, the dude shit. from. He was Conan. married to Elizabeth Taylor. James Earl Jones. Jones. No. Okay, Richard I was gonna Burton. say that would have been crazy back then. So. Hoo-ha. I just find it. Funny. I don't think back then they would have been able to handle that. No, they I just had. Found it was funny. I guess he was coming to dinner. What did you find funny? I found it now. I find it really, really funny that James Earl Jones was in Star Wars. The little movie from 20th Century Fox that everyone thought was going to bomb, and of course James Earl Jones is playing uh, Darth Maul, Makumo, or Kokomo, and, and he's dressed oh, up in a, as a locust, and he's probably thinking this is my big moment, and then he goes to Star Wars, no, I didn't. and then Star Wars comes out, and he's like, "Oh, this was my big moment." Yeah. Oh God, now I'm. Oh, he was God. also the voice of CNN for a long time. This is CNN. Network of yeah, you're watching CNN. I liked him in Fences, not the uh... Picket Fences. Yeah, Picket with fences. Tom Skerritt. Yeah, it Tom Skerritt. It was on USA. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Uh, I think Martial Law came on after that. Oh yeah, and then uh, Lieutenant Dad or whatever. <laughs> what was that? You know I don't remember. It was a bunch of shows like like that. Yeah, and Wings. Reba. Yeah, Wings was huge, man. Uh. Okay, so here's why... He said queso. You know what? No, 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 no. <laughs> I want to hear your Bruh. guys' thoughts. Why do you guys hate The Exorcist 2, The Heretic? Oh, because it's garbage? It's just gay. Well, <laughs> let's go into gay. it. Okay, here's what I hated about it. First off, I fell asleep several times <laughs> watching it. I'm not making Same that up. Here. And I never have that with movies, even if they're boring. Um... There's no point to it having been made whatsoever. No. But that's okay. It's, cash with, grab. That's, it's definitely a cash grab, and there's times that that's totally fine. Uh, you know what I think that they were trying to do was the whole like Rocky thing? And I, like, well, Rocky wasn't a thing yet. Like Okay. That. I mean, well, Rocky, Rocky came out had... in 76, but that wasn't a thing. Yeah. yeah. Rocky wasn't released before they filmed it. Exactly. Well, also, what he's talking about is Rocky 2, 3, 4, 5. They, they were trying to do that whole like. No, but they were starting to get into that territory, obviously, with The Godfather and uh, other, you know, uh, even Death Wish, I think, at that point. No, Death Wish sequels were the 80s. Were they? Mm -hmm. Were they? Because the first one, I think, was 1970. It was 74. 74. Yeah, and I think the second one was 1976. Ooh, that's a good... Well, we might have to come back to Death Wish on a different podcast one day. Wink, 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 wink. Oh, who are you winking at? Wink, 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 wink. Uh, okay. At the listeners. He speaks in winks. Phil's uh, looking it up. Let's let Phil look it up. Death Wish 2. Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Death Wish 2. Death Wish 3. Parabellum. 1982. 19... Right. All right, go God on. God damn it. Go on. I'm sorry. Well, I, I, like I have all this useless film. information. Go on. Anyway, Brr. so The Exorcist 2. <laughs> Uh, go on. Why do you hate it? Like, go. I'm going. There's into more no details. reason. Your okay. director. All right. There's no reason for it to have been made. But I'll I'll leave that one. Just like taking the movie as it is, and it's what you should do to be a proper critic, I guess. Which I'm not. But, um, okay. Okay. First off, it looks like shit compared to the first one. It looks okay. like garbage compared to the first one. The first one had one of the great just the just yeah. It looked the, good because it felt like it, it was shot in that documentarian style. Yeah, which Friedkin was sort of the master of at that point. I mean, he right. really mastered it with uh, a couple of years before with uh, French Connection. By this time, he was banging on all cylinders, and um, he made the supernatural feel real. And this one, they started going into like hocus pocusy type uh, type with that they boo su- boo. Boo! Now lower your tone. That weird fucking stupid hypnotization light, machine. Yeah. The strobe light. Well, the song in the trailer. Like I watched the trailer first, and I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be bad." Oh yeah, it was it had, like a weird like. They were trying to do like that hysteria kind of, uh, like that hysteria kind of song, like that uh, that weird music. They were trying to do like the same thing with uh, like. 
it just seemed like that that song was kind of they're doing that same look it up look up the trailer it's very annoying kick it kick it uh, and we're back. Uh, yeah, that trailer music was bad, Phil. Good point. Gave you an edit point right there, Kale. Yep. So, but hold on, I'm not oh, done. Go ahead. Sorry, I was. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, Linda Blair is not strong enough to carry a movie. Richard Burton isn't either, though. Richard Burton was back in the day. You know, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf era Richard Burton? But again, he shared that time, okay? It wasn't just him, right? And a lot of these scenes, he's carrying it. Now, obviously, he's Richard Burton. He's got a lot more star power than... Um, who's the actor who played uh, Demi, the priest, from the first one again? He was a writer, actually. Jason Miller. Jason Miller had no star power. But Jason Miller was perfectly fucking cast, right? As this uh, this this doubting Catholic. It was really interesting take on it, right? Yeah. And this one, he... He believes in God, and there is actually there's some interesting moments. The strobe light scene's kind of cool in moments, but then it just veers into sh- like just stupid, hacky shit. But there's a great moment in there where Louise Fletcher, who plays the uh, the therapist, who is who, probably the worst thing in this movie. In my Louise opinion. Fletcher, yeah, Louise Fletcher. I feel like they just cast her because they were like, she can play authoritative. She was Nurse Ratchet. Yeah, but I she can't play empathetic very well. Louise Fletcher's kind of a cold actress. Her line readings were the worst to me. Um, I think she was tr- well, she was probably directed to play it. Well, also, this is Louise Fletcher. She plays things a little separate. Do you know what I mean? Like she's reading off of a cue card? Yeah. And <laughs> Phil, the pee bucket's over there, buddy. I can see Phil peeing. I can't. Oh, don't you wish? No. Poke your head through real quick. I'll no, wait. I'm good. All right, fine. I'm Anyways, good. Anyways, so- um, <laughs> you quit. Okay, so uh, there's a really cool scene, or actually it's just a really cool line I really appreciated, between uh, Louise Fletcher's character, uh, Dr. <gasps> fine, Dr. Howard, Dr. <laughs> fine. What the fuck was her name? Who cares? Don't look it up. Get off your phone, you damn millennial. So... Um, there's a really cool scene between her character and Richard Burton's character, the priest, the investigative priest or whatever, the detective priest, where she says, no, it's not her, actually. It's somebody else. Who gives a shit? Somebody asked the priest, do you ever miss the touch of... No, it was Louise Fletcher. And she says, do you ever miss... Do you ever need a woman? And he looks at her and just goes, yes. And they move on. But I really liked that because one of the big questions I've always had for priests, besides other obvious horrible shit is uh, why would you become a priest and give up knowing another person in the biblical sense, you know? Anyways, I thought that was a cool line. The rest of the movie was just weird. The soundtrack was annoying as hell. Uh, I did not give a shit for their sort of uh, pre- Even though it's the Ennio Mor- Morricone. And I love Ennio Morricone. He's a fucking badass, but he is... Uh, this is one of his phoning it in type uh, scores, which I'm sure he did a bunch. You know, he can't always crank out, you know, good, bad, and the ugly level shit. No, no but, ecstasy of gold. Yeah, exactly, right? But I, back. I feel like he phoned it in. I feel... Yeah, Phil's back. Uh, I feel again. like that's st- <laughs> guess who's back? Phillips back. Ah. It's not Pazuzu though. Pazuzu sucks. <sighs> I feel like that stupid locust was stupid. Uh, I do kind of like the animation of it a couple times, and I feel like they kind of went for some cool scenes when they're showing the nightmarish sequences where the locusts are dropping in Africa, and you've got these <laughs> racist African characters just swinging stuff, trying to stop the locusts. Those were wonderfully shot. They were odd as hell. They were almost like, uh, you remember in Phantasm? Uh, yes. One, where they go to, uh, where they peek into the other world, and there's that big weird red sky with the desert with the little uh, Jawa people, Jawa people yeah. and they're carrying those big containers. It had that kind of thing to it where it was like campy horror, but that again, that doesn't- It was surrealist horror. I wouldn't even go. Yeah, I guess to a degree it was, and I, I kind of like what Borman was doing there. But <laughs> Borman, uh, rest of that movie did. But I gotta be honest, it just I like some of the stuff in this movie. This is not The Exorcist. This shouldn't have been a sequel. This should have been. This could have been totally different. Also, I hated the use of the uh, 
the superimposed faces they kept doing throughout the uh, the uh, more uh, trippy strobe light oh, sequences. Okay, they hated Inception that. Scenes. That was so bad. That was so bad. That was so of its era, and it was fascinating to watch. You know, mm-hmm. like I said, I don't like this movie. I knew I wasn't gonna, but there is interesting sort of time capsule late '70s schlocky film stuff that I appreciate. That's my take on it, Phil. What do you think about the film? Uh, it was it was lighthearted romp. Um, I liked when uh, the All right, like, Phil, I think it's Calypso it. music just would play it. and Phil, just say it. Bernie would get up and just dance. say it. I didn't watch it. Okay. What happened? I went to search for it on Amazon Prime and it it, it did not give me the option to buy or rent. Yeah. Did you check Hulu? And then I checked Hulu, and Hulu's like, we don't have that. Did you go to Netflix, which has nothing but Google original Play. content these I, days? Uh, I don't have Netflix anymore. You, oh, you, are you just straight up aren't paying for it anymore? No. Well done. I, I feel like I might take that leap also. Netflix? Well, now that There's they're getting rid of the enough. Marvel shows. Well, yeah, the Marvel shows are gone. Plus, they don't have the stuff that I signed up to Netflix for like eight years ago where my buddies were like, dude, they have B-movies from the, the boy 80s. boy and his dog is on there. They have the stuff. and st- Yeah. You know? And now if I want like Fucking B-group. creep show. Yeah. Now, guess what? You can get all that stuff on Shutter. Shutter, yeah. That app is so great. I love that app. They got the Joe Scream Bob Factory? Briggs. Have you huh? seen the Scream Factory app yet? No. What's this? It's they also have like B horror movies, but not necess- But it's like they have like a bunch of horror movies that have kind of been long forgotten, but they're bringing back out like for Blu-ray and whatnot. Re-issue. Is it through? Um, is it through not Criterion? Uh, Shout. No, oh, what Let was that other media? Out. What was that other media? That other DVD company, Blue Harvest. Oh, no. it was something like that. They put out a lot of the Italian giallo horror films from the seventies and stuff. Uh, like, uh, like uh, I know what you're talking. You know about. what I'm talking about? Lagoon yeah. had a lot of. Uh, uh, no, not that one. Legume, legumes, legume, legume. Baines, great movie. Loved it. Yeah, it's so. pretty good. The Linda Blair does a spit, spit, spit. and then like uh, James Earl Jones is there. So you didn't watch the movie? No, I saw the trailer though. I had to watch this. You could have just saw the trailer. Michael, thank you so much for watching the movie. I'm a pooper. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> so you really did not watch the movie. I didn't watch it. Okay. I've seen bits and pieces of it, like, when I was a kid. I remember the beginning. It's like in that, uh, like, a like a shack it's, kind of thingy in Africa, and there's an exorcism no, it's going in on. Brazil. South America somewhere. South America. Yeah. And it opens in this weird thing where a woman very, very horribly catches on fire. And by horribly, I mean it just wasn't any good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, okay. it's not well done. This movie's not well done. Okay, well... Okay, so here's my take on The Exorcist 2, The Heretic. It's not a... Here's the thing. It is a ballsy movie. It is a absolutely... <sighs> Next level yeah, crazy yeah. shit, like yeah, hell no, no it, level, yeah. like crazy shit. It, it's so totally, it's Serbian film. No, it is not like that. It <laughs> no, is, no, not like no. that. But it is one of those movies that it it swings for the fences. It misses wonderfully. Oh, God, I don't yeah. think it's good. The problem is, is that it's the second Exorcist, so I judge it against the first one. So let me take that away too. That's unfair. Yeah. If this was on its own and it was just called The Heretic, right? Right. I think it would be a movie that a lot more people would probably see who are into B, B horror. I don't even think it's considered B because, I mean, all the effects look really good. No, it's considered B as fuck. It's hated. It is despised. In fact, it's so hated most people don't watch it because it's not part of a winning franchise, first off. It's not like Phantasm 1 through 4. I think 4. Yeah, where they just – that that caught on with horror movie fans of the early 80s through, the, so, through like, 1990s. 90s, yeah. yeah. I think they might have done a newer one. Did they really? Yeah. But with The Exorcist, believe me, I, I've seen every horror movie kind of guy, right? I have always skipped this and the third one. Especially the third one with that, with, I think, Michael Richard Keenan is in that one. George C. Scott. George C. Scott. That's it, George C. Scott. Scott. Even James worse, Jones. George C. Scott's Patton. angry old ass is in this. And it was like 1989 or something. I think. Was it 1990? And uh, that stupid fucking cover art where it's just a wheelchair in a fucking stair at the top of a staircase into hell or something. And it just looks like they're ripping off fucking uh, the Freddy Krueger type shit. <laughs> Mind you, by the way, guys, check this out. 
Oh, you got a Nightmare oh, on Elm nice. Street shirt. Love this shirt. It's my second Nightmare on Elm Street shirt. The first one I got is the Coup de Gras, and it is the Dream Warriors shirt. Love it to death. It's my favorite. Um, After the first one, or just your favorite altogether? After the first one. I was going to say, because that first one, I still suggest, is the Great American Horror Movie. It is. It's the Great American Horror Two was weird. Two was weird. Two was accidentally fun, gay. Though. Two was accidentally gay. Did you ever hear about that? Yeah. Did you ever hear about character? that character? Yeah. Well, the thing was, actually, the writer came out later to admit that he was inspired by kind of the AIDS crisis and and to write, you know, a, a horror sequel, to write his horror sequel about, like, you know, kind of the allegory of the AIDS crisis. You know, I've heard him say that, and I don't believe him. I just don't well, believe that. Well, I think he that. was taking a different approach. No, I mean, I get that. Obviously, instead of a scream queen, you got a scream queen. You got uh, you got a, an actual gale, gay male actor. Gale. Uh, he actually wasn't out at the time. He was not. No, he was actually he was actually open at oh, the time. Yes, okay. he was. He was one of those early was... open actors, definitely. Especially on set. But there's that S&M gay bar scene. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a yeah. fantastically weird movie with that character actor who played the the angry gym coach who he spanks to death with wet towels. Yeah. It's a weird fucking movie. It's wild as hell. But uh, yeah, Dream Warriors, the third one, was fantabulous. I was talking with Alejandro Dockin. earlier. Yeah, Dawkin. What's, yeah. what's, what's the no, one? Dawkin. I don't think it's Dream Warriors. Dockin. The one where uh, Freddy's like, like this guy's in a dream and, and like his mom's in it, but it's it's uh, Freddy and he's like, "Let me clean your ears." I think that's the sixth one. Yeah, no, that's the. But that's the deaf kid. First off, that he does that too. Yeah, that's the deaf kid. He does that too. Actually, I think that is the Dream Warriors. Could be. Was there? I think that was the Dream Warriors. I don't think it. I thought it was much. Or was later. that the fourth one? It would believe no, it was the not one, the, the trash one. man fell in the trash compactor, and it. Oh wait, that was Saw? which Chucky was that? <laughs> I think that's the third one. At the military camp. Yep. Yeah. That was pretty. That's a. That's a really. That's one of my on favorites. One. That's pretty good. Uh, you know the. So that's re- the first one. You know they re- They've remade it. It's coming out. Child's Play. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it actually looks. Is fantastic. it still Brad Dorif? Is it kill? I don't think it is. Yeah, it's uh, Willem Dafoe. Brad, that'd be. That'd be that'd be I that would be works. some next level shit. Yeah, but you know what? I wouldn't like that voice actually. You know because Nicholas Brad Cage, Dur- Brad Dourif. <laughs> <laughs> no, have you seen Mandy yet? By the way, I still have yet to see it. Me too. It's on Shutter, the app. I work for them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I noticed. Good. I know. I've mentioned them so many goddamn times. Um, but yeah, sorry. Um, so um, The Exorcist 2. Oh, that, okay, right. Okay, so here's why I like the movie. Okay. And I'll try to explain it. So, yes, you're right. The visual template looks terrible. I mean, there's certain scenes in this movie where I was like, holy fuck, they didn't shoot this on location. They shot this at a fucking soundstage. There were a few. and well, that's Going under- old school. That's understandable for a lot of the uh, scenes in Africa, though. Uh, after, like, 1965... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. After the golden age of cinema, where everyone was shooting on location, it's kind of like, why? Why? I bother? thought the golden age used like backdrops and shit. No, that he means he means on sound stages and stuff. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Old yeah. Holly weird, but I don't know about that entirely because um, we were just doing an episode on uh, true romance. And Tony Scott made a really good point in an interview, of course, before his passing. He didn't show up as a ghost. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, Hello. He, he made a really interesting point that uh, when he wants to completely control a situation, especially in an action film, well, Tony Scott, so in an action film. And that film, was actually John Borman's reason of doing a lot of stuff. To control studio. as much of the environment as possible. So I bet you the African scenes that were highly effects-driven, you'd probably want that. You know, that makes sense. Even though they still did use, uh, like, split screen and all that kind of uh, you know technology from back then to do so yeah i really so, it's odd because you're right this the first scene didn't make any sense because a the problem is we have no emotional attachment to father lamont nor do we have any emotional attachment to the girl who is being possessed you know going in and out of possession and even when she is possessed it's Still, like it, ex- it still has makes no sense because why would a demon possessed 
possessing themselves be like, I'm going to burn alive, bitch. <laughs> Goodness. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> crazy. Even then, her body, cool. If you notice, there's two or All three right. different people that get burned alive in this movie. Yes. Uh, that was another thing that struck me as uh, you're running out of ideas here. Yeah. <laughs> right to the finish line. I mean, I, I agree. Some, like, this, the one where Sharon. You fucking see it. The one where <laughs> Sharon dies uh, at the end of the movie, like, it kind of makes sense but the problem is it's the wrong person seeing it's the wrong person seeing the death exactly like really Sh- exacto mundo like really sharon's death should be viewed by <clears throat> father lamont not uh gene not not you know. mean gene yeah yeah so yeah <laughs> rust in peace rust in peace so that's, buddy so again oh, but the, also sad. the issue is the whole movie doesn't really makes this whole case on. It's almost like a detective story. Yeah, but so also, was the first one. Was uh, a detective yeah, story. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it also, but it's also a detective story of breaking down everything that happened in The Exorcist, which is already it's unnecessary. A, it's like it's, Back well, it's to the Future idea. Two. Back to the Future Two is just here's the greatest hits from the first well, one. It's like a magician trying. I like three. Well, it's the reason. Would, yeah. Well, the reason you would never do that is because it's the magician revealing all the tricks behind the curtain. Yeah, exactly. exposing the business. Yeah, it delves a lot into Max von Sydow's character, which I love. My, Max von Sydow, he's great. He's Judge Dredd. He was a fantastic. He was fantastic. He's fantastic. In Judge he's still Dredd. alive. Yeah, dude, he's like a hundred. <laughs> I was gonna say, is he hundred and twelve? He looks like he did in fucking seventh. Does he wear man. shoe boxes for? <laughs> uh, does, does he wear Kleenex boxes for shoes? Oh goodness. <laughs> 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 um, sorry, Kale. You were saying something about a little movie. Oh, called yeah. the truth about cats and dogs. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> cats and dogs too. <laughs> anyway, so the heretic. Meow harder. Admit, like a lot of it doesn't work. Like there's a scene I clearly remember this where they're doing the first hypnotizing scene in the movie, and Yo. fucking the psychiatrist fucks up, and she ends up you know being. Like totally, like that in was a so stupid. That was so stupid. That was Father so Lamont. aggravatingly dumb. I and agree. Father Lamont's like, I know where to find her. Right now, I know where she is. Help me to find her. Yes, put me, uh, in, put me under, please. Reagan, tell me where to find her. Yeah, yeah, it's so <laughs> stupid. It's, it's just like go down, go deep, and then, and then you see this stupid uh, superimposition of, and they reshot it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, a scene from the original Exorcist where she's in the the uh, bedroom back in DC. Yeah, and Father Lamont's doing, I guess, the exorcism by himself. No, it's not Father Lamont. Or, it's Father no, um, Father Marin. Yeah, Father Marin. Uh, ah. Marin. He's doing it by himself. <laughs> Lozenges, <laughs> cats, cats, and then he has a heart attack. Watch so glow. Further revealing. <laughs> So further Mark, revealing that Mark Maron that's the joke we were making. Kel, have you ever heard of his podcast? What podcast do you listen? to? Lock the gates. WTF with Mark Maron? Lock the kids! WTF with Mark Maron? Yeah, do you ever listen to that? Yeah, I listened to the one with uh, William Friedkin was on. Heard about Joe do you, Rogan? Do you keep calling him William Freak, Freak, Friedkin? You keep Friedkin. calling him William Friedkin. Friedkin. It's Friedkin. Friedkin. It's Friedkin. If I can say He's one of the greats, it. baby. Have you ever heard this, by the way? Um, what, cruising? No, no, Jesus. Why is you hear it or see it? Hey, BMSers. Uh, Michael here. You ever heard uh, the show? Before we rip throats yeah. and kick butt, uh, we'd like to urge Actually, all y'all no. Instagram Tell me more bitches about it. to head over to our Instagram. Well, here, I'll let me do it. Which is PMS underscore podcast for updates. Got extra content. Got some funny videos. It sounds so good, don't I? And, uh, yeah, you got a voice for radio. Thanks, babe. Talk to us on there. If you got an idea Love for you. a movie, leave it and there. A face we'll for coming. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that the Golden Girls theme? No, that's Poncho and Lefty, bra. Oh, gee. Yeah. It's so big, dude. It's like dragging eight feet behind him. Oh, this is a great bit. Can I can I play a second of this? Sure. Why don't you just send me the sound clip and I'll put it in the actual No. Song. Yeah. Hey, you just see this naked, giant Austrian bodybuilder just walking through a This is Terminator. With the dick. His... And it's a sizable honker. We're talking about how big Arnie's dick is. Doctor Manhattan like freaks you out. Like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> no, this is because you know it's real. Yeah. Right. It was a governor, brother. Okay. It's just it's a governor's w- penis. Hey, and it's huge. Yeah. It's so big, dude. It's like dragging eight feet. Okay. See now, if you go to our podcast, which is gonna be uh, Arnie's penis, it'll. <laughs> 
I'm guessing <laughs> on that one. Uh, Philip, you're so bad. Uh, I positively must spank ye. <laughs> uh, get the paddles. I don't know. Man. So, Father, <laughs> you shutting down? I'm, 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 I'm doing good. I'm just slightly shutting down. Yeah. So, Father Lamont goes to Africa. <sighs> <laughs> And he finds, so does Ernest. <laughs> yeah, get in line. And I'm back. <laughs> and he finds slightly racist African stereotypes and Darth Vader. Darth Vader is. Playing. He's like, what the hell Come am on. I doing here? What I'm, about, yeah. I'm sweating my. I'm pussy in a off. fucking locust costume. Nobody said who he was. So here's the problem that I have: is the movie's trying to be like, so where's the line between science and religion, which is a similar line the mo- the first one's trying to cross. You well, know? no, the yeah, the, the first half of The Exorcist is basically a a, a medical drama. It's what makes it such a masterpiece. Ah, it's like House. Right. And then the second half is pure supernatural. It's Scrubs. I mean, it gets supernatural. <laughs> it's supernatural Was throughout the film. Harold and Dean there. With the mise en scene and Hank. the you know subliminal images popping in into the movie. No, I understand that. What I'm saying though is the second half is where it 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 makes the case that this is supernatural. Right. And the first half is they're trying to figure out what the hell's going on. This kid, she gets a spinal tap with that machine. Dun 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 dun. She's screaming. God, that first one's so good. Why are we talking about this one? Tabular bales. Because Richard Burton is fucking hilarious. He's hilarious. Because he's screaming at Because him screaming, uh, Silencio, Silencio. Por favor. Yeah, in Spanish is hilarious. Like him just. Because, first of all, okay, I forgot to mention the first scene. We're jumping around. I'm sorry. The first scene is so hilarious. Yeah, there's other like, come on, come on. Because he looks like. (laughs) Trying to get my youth critics in. He, He looks so much like. What the fuck am I doing in here? What the fuck am I... Wouldn't you? If you're a fucking <laughs> priest from America and you're just with an English accent that you're trying to hide and you're hurled into fucking South America where there's a woman on fire, you're not going to be like, I'm sensitive. <laughs> no, you'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> you'd be freaking out. This okay. movie is... First off, I'd be fucking freaking out if I was in this movie because I'd be like, wow, this is bad. This stinks on hot ice. Yeah. Oh, fee, bo fee. No good, no good. Why is John, why is John putting me in this movie? You're doing a lot of Ellis from Die Hard tonight. I can't help it. Um, You're just so excited? Hans, <laughs> booby. So, okay. So, I've made the case so far that the movie is bad, right? Yeah. So, why do I... Not hate this movie? Well, first of all... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. You're one of them. You're okay, one Michael, of them. calm down. It's okay. <laughs> no, put, it da- put it away. Uh, that's, He's uh, dead tired. He's... <laughs> it's... The reason... I eat the green berries for breakfast. And right now, I'm very hungry. So... Do we get to win this one? <laughs> you can't bench press your I way get, out of this one. I'm <laughs> fascinated by this movie because it's... A s- through its bullshit, it's a story of redemption. Like if you follow All Richard movies Burton's are character, stories of redemption. But That's no, the hero's watch, journey. watch Richard Burton's character. Like he feels totally like horrified by what happened in, in South America, like, to the point where he doesn't want to take the task to investigate Father Marin's, you know, what he exorcism. did before. The exorcism? Yeah. He doesn't want to do that. So but he does it anyway because like he Penn respected State. Father Marin. So he goes on this journey, Head. meets Linda Blair, and sees the good in her and sees and ultimately Father Marin th- there's Mark this whole Marin. twist this whole the, the whole twist of the movie is that Father Marin is I basically find that. living also in Boomer lives. And, and this is how No he's not. And this is how I interpret like the last thirty minutes of the movie is that That's how I Richard interpret Burton it. My cat could kick Mark Marin's cat's is ass. Is that Lamont realizes that Marin is also whole, keeping the good side Lock of the gates. Reagan alive while Pazu <laughs> The Pearly Gates. Pazuzu is keeping all, is still <laughs> He said Kale, hold on, I know, but I, you just said Pazuzu, and I gotta point it out. My man just said Pizone. He said Pizone. No, not Piz. 
Is that how y'all say it? Because you guys live further out. P zone. Yeah, I, Mama done ordered a P zone. <laughs> Yeah. Is that how you guys say it out there? I heard it. That's how I heard it on our TV. It's, well, P zone is like laser tag, but the guns shoot. P. Yeah, PP. No, I think tinkle P, guns. P, no, P zone sounds like what like a bro says. Hey man, fucking you know, sh- hit the P zone. man. Fucking got Audrey in the P zone. <laughs> and he's like, whoa, dude. Whoa, bro. Audrey died six weeks ago. He's like, what? What, bro? <laughs> It's a whole twist, and not oh. Shalomans involved. Shalomon, Shamalama Ding Dong. Shamalama, hey, yeah. Ding Dong. It's it's M Night Shyamalan, not Shalomon. I don't care. So you really gla- should actually. His new movie's coming out. Yeah, it's, Glass it's, is it, coming it's out. Yeah, I'm going to really see Glass. Good. Yeah, fucking. It's gonna break like Glass though. Oh, uh, what do you mean? What does that mean? No, hold it's on, Phil, pun. stop for a second. I don't understand. What's the pun, man? It's gonna break. Like it's gonna break. Maybe break a record. Hold on. Is it one step closer? Hold on. What, no, what do you mean, though? I don't understand the pun. You know how glass breaks? No. Stone cold. Like glass? Yeah. What about it? It breaks. Okay. So what's the movie breaking? It like box break office record. records? Yeah. Oh, for what? Best January opening. <laughs> it's coming out in January? Yeah, it's coming out like this week. Or no, next week. Oh, goodness. Yeah, and it's January. Yeah, it's freezing outside, so... Oh, God. When's this episode coming out? Um, Like, I don't know, like a few days from now. Oh, God. Okay. Do you do you release on schedule? No. You I can't you... anymore. Why? Because I have work, and then, every, and then uh, it takes a lot of work to wrangle hosts. Hosts? Like guest hosts. Oh, I guest have hosts. different... I have like a rotating, you know, revolving door of guest hosts. Well, you got me, you got Filthy Bilty over here. Get Justin. Here? Justin Mayhew? Yeah, and then I got whoever's going to be on the Exorcist you. 3 with me. You got who? I got whoever's going to be on the Exorcist 3 with me. Who's that? Who? You'll find out next week. Oh. You should try and put your podcast out uh, the same day every week. That way people know when to tune in. It helps build an audience. How many listeners do you get? We do not release that information. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay. It's, it's confidential. FBI shit. We huh? get 100 million a day. Yeah, a day. Damn. It's yeah. like, <laughs> damn. Yeah. Y'all must be rolling. Yeah. And what do From you, ecstasy. Uh, yeah, we're not, uh, we don't do drugs. We don't Club do drugs. drugs. Yeah, that's that not what I meant. Takes an ice cream scoop out of the brain. So. Yeah, that's what I heard. Philip and I are basically trying to reenact Party Monster constantly. <laughs> <laughs> We're Never usually tried. just walking around in a ditzy, drug days. Uh, Ever tried reenacting transpotting? I'm the, sorry, transpotting. Yeah, ever tried reacting, re- reenacting transpotting? I've never Every heard, night. I've what never, are you talking about? Yeah, that's how we live, Bay. Okay. Bae. Dirty mattress on the floor, dead baby in the other room. <laughs> Diarrhea. Diarrhea. <laughs> when you got a dead baby in the no, other. No, no, oh God. Okay. No, <laughs> this is a family podcast. Is it, it really though? It no. is. <laughs> oh God, you got me. So wh- what are you? Yeah, because everyone's just storming for this, like it's a prairie home companion. Can... <laughs> <laughs> you dick. Garrison Keillor is. I don't know who that is. Bae. Does he do gay porn? Everybody... He sounds like it, doesn't he? <laughs> he, he does. does. Sounds okay. Because like... you're always like Skyler Moss. No, it's and... Kyler Moss. Okay. And he's honestly, he's been out of the game since like 2012 or something. He's smoking hot. Type. He's he's retired, so he does camp soda. <laughs> <laughs> does he do old people porn? I elderly bet he porn? might. Uh, does he do old people porn? What yeah, the fuck does that porn? mean? What is that? <laughs> you watch elderly Ever... porn? No, I'm Ooh. saying like. What kind of porn does... do you watch? I'm not revealing. That's also confidential. Oh, okay. Is her name Jenner Jameis? I don't know who's straight porn. You know, just say titties. Oh, titties? Titties. Dig old titties? I will not confirm or deny. Big throbby titties. Sweaty boobies covered in poop. Baby oil. Dinky. And poop. <laughs> oh, you're in the Shizer porn. Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, his last name is Smith Klein. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm it's a- German. <laughs> Oh, do you? Okay. And your first name is Glaxo? <laughs> Glaxo Smith Klein? They're a big company. I'm a character from. We're working. We're wor- this is us fucking working it out here. I'm a character from Baccaramanza, yes. Uh, 
Hell yeah, Buckaroo Bonsai. Peter Weller. Check it out. So, Peter Weller. Jeff Goldblum. No, Peter Weller walking down the street. Peter you know what Weller. Peter Weller was not in? Dead or Alive. <laughs> no, Robocop 3? <laughs> that is true. That yeah. is true. Yeah. That is true. He also wasn't in The Exorcist 2. Oh, man. Starring Richard me, Burton. Mike Mule. He was I getting saw ready the mule. Huh? I saw the mule. Wh- what's that? Clint Eastwood's what? new movie. Oh. Is, is he bl- oh, it's he has he... a threesome twice in that movie. With... Thought he saw your wiener well, when like, you went wh- to pee. Well, like women. <laughs> right? I assumed it was with women, but <laughs> what women? I don't see, first off, Clint Eastwood at this age in a threesome with two guys would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what? I'm gay. <laughs> And I'm a fucking freak, and he's just getting nailed for Generation hours. Generation of pussies, watch Fuck this. Yeah, they get one I'm of those, taking three at once. They get one of those buff boys who are cute, and they wear glasses. Like Bradley you know? Cooper? No, like Blake Mitchell from Halix Studios. And he comes in, and he just rails him like he did the fucking... Um, do you guys watch Helix Studios? No. What's your favorite gay porn company? Is it Boy Next Door? You seem like a, f- like a French studs guy. <laughs> Or even Falcon Studios, maybe. I'm so proud of myself. I, I'm I'm more into bears and squares. It's that's a fat, what... hairy, gay guy <laughs> and a nerd that's like, I I don't know if I'm gay. I'm not getting laid, but <laughs> uh, maybe I'm gay. I'm so proud of myself right now. Why? I am so proud, but I can't ever say it. It'll break the fourth wall of this show. I don't understand. I'll explain later. Wink, wink. He's cousins with Tony Stark. What? Yeah, what? Okay, we're completely off one. the rails. No, we're not. Phil, what's going on? I just got some breaking news, but I don't know what he's talking about. Don't say you have breaking news when you're... In a... Yeah, you shouldn't tease the audience like that. Yeah. Well, this was not breaking news. Well, you shouldn't be like, hey, uh, stuff. I can't tell you. Like, I can't like break news on something that's been going on for four and a half years. Or three and a half years. What? Is the show ending? No. There's no news. What's been going on for three and a half years? Our friends doing this podcast. You've been doing this podcast for three and a half years. Yes. How many episodes have you done? Like 180 or 170. It's probably like 170 something. Well, we have like four <laughs> combined with others, maybe. Yeah, but to be got fair, I've taken 30. a month off. Why'd you take a month off? Just have work and Christmas and. Would you get cut out all of those? Would you get Philip for Christmas? I got him a piece of my ass. Phil, you lucky devil. Oh, well, got me a new pillow. (laughs) (laughs) Something you can bite on? (laughs) I'm kidding. So The Exorcist 2... Is so good. I love it. The end. That's the end of the episode. I'm Mike Milbear. You wished. So... You brought up Ennio I- Morricone's score. I did not. Oh, okay. I never would do that. It's pretty... Yeah. <laughs> that is not like me. I... Okay, I'll sum up my thoughts on Exorcist 2 so we can wrap this up. I got some thoughts for you. So Exorcist 2, it swings for the fences. It's ambitious. It yeah, co- it's... it looked like it cost a lot of money. Sure it probably, it like $10 million probably went to Richard Burton. Yeah, be honest. How much was the budget on that? Like thirty something million dollars. God damn, dude, that's 1977 Buccarinos. Yeah, uh, they spent an ass load of money. So, they... what's the rotten mater? What's the mater meter on this piece? I want to say twenty four percent. I don't think so. Let's let Phil look it up, and while Phil looks it up, I'm going to pull up some music. I want to go with it's seventeen. Ambitious. Hold on, everybody needs to be it's either twenty four or thirteen. We we will see. We'll be right back. Starring me, Mike Mule. Me, we Phillip. don't do commercial breaks. You do commercial breaks? We don't do commercial breaks. We'll be right we'll, back. We're just doing this. It's not, it's not going to take that long. You're just Love giving it. the audience an excuse to leave. <laughs> okay. Um, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 70%. The audience gave it a 12 Oh, <laughs> so the audience hated it. It's like, yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> now, I bet you a lot of that is the fact that the movie sucks. <laughs> I, a lot of it is also, this is also kind of a, an art film. <laughs> like, it's almost an art film. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is. John Borman, 
was more. He was definitely an artsy director. I mean, the fucking guy made Zardoz, which is a piece of shit. But <laughs> it's a piece of shit. <laughs> it's that's Connery in a weird thong singlet. Well, it's where the gods have taken all the guns, right? Yeah, From government. The- that's the government. That's the government getting its stinky, dirty little claws inside of my gun box. <laughs> so you're saying John Borman voted for Trump? I'm saying John Bor. Well, John Borman passed. No, he's still alive. No, 1993. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. Phil- Kale, don't look it up. I can tell you. Kale, Kale, <laughs> put your phone down. Kale, put your phone. Kale, put the phone down. I'll press stop right now. I'll okay, stop recording. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Just hold on. Just hold on. Can I please tell you how John Borman died? Yes. He's still alive, by the way. Yeah. Uh, he fucking ran over that bit. What? He ran right over that this bit. This is why we don't have you on our show often. <laughs> you ruined the bit. The bit was going to be, I said I was going to say he committed suicide via rattlesnake in a bathtub, and you fucking went and took a white hot dookie all over it. I shit on a snake. <sighs> yeah. You shit hot snakes all over that bit is what you did, you poop. That's so a much. weird way to go out. Why would you go out that way? Episode 183. <laughs> yeah, well, Delroy, Delroy Lindo did. Delroy Lindo died that way. For actually. a week. Oh, okay. He's the guy from, um, he's the one who tells uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show Man to stop eating his sesame cake. Oh, okay. He's also in Get Shorty, right? He was in Get Shorty. Yeah. He was also in Gone in 60 Seconds. He was in a lot of shit. I don't see him in much these days, but he might be doing TV. I don't know. I really like him. Who knows? I thought you said he was dead. No, uh, his spirit. You know what the fuck I'm <laughs> saying, all right? He's fine, all right? Whatever. Anywho, so Anyways. I think the reason, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Like, it's just some fucking weird, like, there is some <laughs> next level shit in this movie. It is so next level. I mean, the movie ends with Linda Blair. She doesn't, like. What, is she fucking lassoing? What are you she's, doing? Like, lasso, <laughs> I think that's Linda Carter. You're fucking, doing this, though. She's doing, like, this Ooh. lasso Ooh. dance with the fucking Wonder Wonder Woman? Trying to, like. <laughs> You know, conjure up some she, bad. Yeah, she's trying to like fucking Harry cl- Potter the locust away. No, she's trying to like clear a room of a really stinky fart. <laughs> <laughs> well, she couldn't help it. Richard Burton took a giant shit everywhere. Oh my god, stop! Um, don't do that. <laughs> don't 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 make fun of Richard fucking Burton. Uh, His son Tim is a genius. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so like I don't. It's such a <clears throat> weird, interesting movie. Like. But it all made sense to me. Like, everything made sense to me. I wasn't bored, and it, everything made sense. See, that's the thing, is I was bored by this, and I think that would be the big problem for it. Like, yeah. I, I rewatched Joe Dirt the other day, and I haven't seen that in years. And I rewatched it, and it's a very funny movie that moves along at a fun pace. It's stupid. It's got crass humor all over it. And I'm definitely not comparing the two, but it, it moves along, whereas this movie, I felt like... Like, it would have five minutes of really interesting, bizarre, not that well done, but really kind of interesting stuff it was doing. And then it would have, like, ten minutes of just, like, all right, now. Who gives a shit? Yeah, it had that kind of thing it suffered from. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole subplot where Richard Burton goes and tells them where a body was. And tells them he flew on the wings of, of a demon locust. Yeah, and they're like, all right, wacko. And then they're like, fuck him, he's a devil worshiper. Let's eat his butt, Mithy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. really, more they were upset. By, <clears throat> but really, they were more upset by Cleopatra. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, God, what was that about? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh oh, uh oh, Lego. Lego, my Lego. So, <laughs> so Exorcist uh, Two. It's a bizarre movie. Go it's a on, weird... I'm so bored with you. I just want to bite you and fucking rip your flesh off. Phil, you gotta pee again. Yes. You have got to get that looked into. Yeah, please check your prostate. He pees like a bitch, dude. It's crazy. Oh, what? You're going to let me talk about it? you like that, bro? I have to pee. I don't care. Just listen to PMS, an action movie podcast. It's available on iTunes and fucking wherever you get your podcast. The Exorcist 2. It's, really it's a f- fun intro. <laughs> <laughs> Philip f- off mic said electric boogaloo and it got kale. It's kale a f- left. It's a fun, uh, not fun. It's it is fun. Know. No, it, it's fun in the sense that like you can't believe someone created this shit. Yes, it is. It's almost bad enough that it could. It's not the room. It's not Troll Two. No, I mean it's still like it has more cinematic quality than the, the definitely than yeah, those the, two. Yeah, it's oh. not. It's not so bad. It's good, but because it's just 
it's it's just bad to the point that it's just kind of meh for me. Right. But again, I think the effects did show up. I feel like they did some really cool effects. Mm -hmm. I feel like they should not have done a straight-on shot of a woman burning if they could not pull that off successfully. Because what The Exorcist did, the first one, was it made the effects very realistic to the sense that... And it shot it in a way... And it actually had like real people doing like the MRI. It felt... Yes, right. Everything it, felt authentic. It was very authentic. And they spent the first half of that movie placing you in an authentic world. So the second half was more believable. You know? Yeah, and... Whereas the, this one starts off wackadoo because they were like... I guess because they were like, cat's out of the bag. It's supernatural. Let's just start supernatural. And I feel <laughs> like that's the problem with it. It doesn't... It never puts you in the place of, this is believable, I buy this, this is something I can understand. It's kind of that same ideology Janot's work had when he was directing Jaws 2, where it was like, well, we can't do the shark, hide the shark anymore. Because the shark has already been revealed. Right, right. Everybody knows that iconic shot. Now. Yeah. We need a bigger boat shot, you know? Yeah, they, they you can't pull off the... The eyes. Again. Go so, on, Phil. That's so... Hard. The in, meaty black so in a way of trying to be, over. And, uh, so, I'll never put on a little life jacket again. <laughs> so <in laughs> I'll a, put on a damn. One day we need to talk about Jaws. Have you never talked about Jaws? That's my. It's one of my fave movies ever. It's oh not had God, like an anniversary. Makes, sorry, yet. I was stretching my legs. Yeah, Phil kind of played footsie with me <laughs> under the table. I played kneesies. I started the show the, on the <laughs> day. Reezies. I actually started the show <laughs> on the day uh, we did the first <laughs> episode together. 9-11. That's right. Yeah, we got sort of bumped right. <laughs> by the day's events. But uh, yeah, the first episode of uh, the podcast you and I ever did together was that uh, that unseasonably warm day in Manhattan, September 11th, 2001. R.I.P. Never forget. Never surrender. Yeah, I think that's never an action movie, probably. <laughs> never forget. Never surrender. <laughs> um, so... Always forget, always surrender? That's a bad name for an action movie. Always forget, never remember. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Reagan years. <laughs> I was going to say Glenn Campbell story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's a reference to old timers disorder or whatever. Go on, Cable. Cable. <laughs> so yeah, The Exorcist 2, it's a mess, but it's a... F for me, it was a fun mess because <laughs> I... Is it a hot mess? It's a fun mess because A, like... Richard Burton's not buying any into any of this bullshit nah, at all. Not Richard Linda Attenborough. Linda Blair is trying, but she's really not working with good material. Who? Uh, Linda Blair. Yeah, Louise Fletcher is the one I was most disappointed. I like Louise. It's good, not. But... No, I was disappointed in the filmmaking for her not coming off well. Louise Fletcher is a fucking A class talent. She's one of the great fucking character actresses. She genuinely is. But, I mean, Nurse Ratchet alone. She was only a couple years after that, and the stuff she would go on to do with Murphy Brown. No, I'm kidding. That wasn't her. But huh? <laughs> no, but like she was so good in uh, everything she's been in. But they gave her the role. They gave her the authoritative hospital role again, which we're sort of burying the lead. She, <clears throat> she works in an all glass fucking mirror, mirror fucking. Uh, uh, which that can't which, be a good idea. To the medicine woman. What would they have called that school back in the day? Mirror school? No. No, it was uh, kids with like mental uh, handicaps. Uh, that's not the right way to say that. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> what is that called? Uh, Montessori. Don't learning disability stuff like that. There's an autistic learning, girl that she yeah. learns. She teaches. She teach, She uses reaches her psychic in ability and, to unlock her voice. And then she can speak. And the mom, the mom in that scene when she comes in, the, oh my god, my baby, my baby, she gives the best performance in the. <laughs> no, it is bad. That is sleepaway camp bad acting. That is like, do you remember the mom in Camp Sleepaway? Yeah. You remember how she was like, oh, I was positively sure I packed yeah. the lunch. Oh, here you go, chill. Do you remember how odd she was? Yeah. It was like Had that. An awkwardness to she her. She was like that, just where she was like a dollhouse come to life on schizophrenic fucking <laughs> energy only. It was fucking crazy. Well. Kale just took a sip of a Milwaukee light and went, Milwaukee's <laughs> best Like light. he did a shot of fucking, you know, black velvet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, hold on, Phil. You all right? <laughs> hold on, Phil. You okay? I'm done sneezing. Are you being possessed by Pazuzu? God, whatever that is. It's uh, it's my dad. My, my dad used to drive a Pazuzu. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Pazuzu. 
<laughs> so he wrote on the back of a demon locust. <laughs> That's my Eddie Murphy. Let me try it again. Ah, 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 ah. Is that good? Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> ah! I got another gun to try it. What? <laughs> 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 That's what he did. That's what he did in his movies. <laughs> he I would go. I've... Here's how. Oh, I got to do an Eddie Murphy laugh again. He would go. Oh, 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 oh. Know what I mean? Now I'm really uncomfortable. <laughs> Why are you uncomfortable? That was really unsettling. You know, like this movie, but this, yeah, this movie was like slipping into a coma. <laughs> no, it gonna, wasn't that bad. No, it was that bad. Go on, <laughs> no, Kel. a coma. Let me into a coma wanna, would be more. Do in- you have something special you want to say to all your friends? Something crazy? Don't slip into a coma, Philip. Philip no, I'm not. Philip, don't you slip into that coma? Unless the, unless the coma is a code word for my asshole, huh, fellas? My stomach gave me a coma. <laughs> Um, all right. Anyway, so I don't have more to say. Ugh. Go on, sorry. This movie is a fun bad movie. It's a fun bad movie. Michael, I'm sorry you were bored. I wasn't. I was also eating a lot of Halo Top ice cream. <laughs> How is that? I've never heard of it. Oh my God, or Kale! Check goals. this. You can eat an entire pint of it, and it's only three two hundred and forty calories. <gasps> oh. What flavor did you have? Uh, come and shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's my jokes. Um, I had salted caramel and peanut Burton ice cream. Oh, God. Peanut Burton. It's <laughs> it all was... goth look looking. <laughs> uh, oh. I think we're good here. So, we're so. Walk the gates! <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Michael, Philip, where can people find you Oh, guys? well, hold on. we got to do up our closing music. Hold on. We had this right. shit written down, brother. Yeah, hold on. Let me get the closing music. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Here it is. <sighs> Philly. Yeah. Had a lot of fun today. I did, too. We learned a lot. We did. We learned a lot about... Uh, Life. P zones, P zones, poo zones, poo zones, <laughs> and um, we learned something about coming shit ice cream. Coming shit ice cream. <laughs> 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 we learned a lot about a lot, though. Yeah, yeah. And I love you. I love you too, man. And if I could say one thing to the fans out there in youth critic land, I would say, quit being so critical. Look at life with this song's not fun enough. Hold on, can I can I change it real quick? You can do a fun song, I guess. I don't care. Okay. <coughs> I was gonna cut this out anyway. I'm kidding. Don't do that. I'm kidding. Okay. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You've been listening to the Youth Critic Podcast, starring me, Mike Mule, me, Philip, and Boo Howdy, Phil. Where can the little babies find us? <laughs> to find the podcast, you can go on iTunes, Stitcher. Podbean. Be exciting when you do it. SoundCloud. Ooh. <clears throat> and if and if you're on iTunes. I am. You are? What can I do on it? You can give us a review. Well, what do I get for it, fucko? I think you get a t-shirt. That sounds fun. You get fun. a t-shirt, yeah. You get a pretty fucking badass t-shirt. Fuck yeah, dude. All right, I'll do that, man. So, Phil. Yeah. Did you have fun? I always have fun. Phil's a fun fucking guy. All right, all right, and that's how we stop the show. Yeah. Okay, that's it. All right. Um, is there anything you want to say? What's our Instagram? So, all right, so listeners, you can find me on Twitter at Movie Kale, and you can also follow the show at The Youth Critic, and you can also follow the channel that distributes this podcast at KHC Network. Thanks, everyone. We'll be back with you next week for The Exorcist 3. Starring me, Mike Mule. Me, Philip. Can we do one of our endings for your show? That'd be fun. I thought you just did one. No, no, no. We, our, our ending. Yeah. Oh, go it? ahead. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next week when Kale comes back with a vengeance. Say it. something edgy. No, we have to play the rest of the song as we Okay, yeah, 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 yeah.
did. Tailwind in my hair. I saw the Youth Critic Podcast. And I quickly subscribed. And I listened to the episodes. But PMS was funnier. So I went and subscribed to them. <laughs> and then I got a free shirt. I P- got a free shirt from PMS with a vengeance. And you don't have to do the whole name. Uh, you threw me off. Hold on. God damn it. I'm sorry. We're still we're still working on it, man. Shit. Hold on. Let's Should do we this cut right. this part out? No. No. All right, Phil. You ready for it this time? <laughs> yeah. Because we're going to kill him. We're starting this over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and we got to get these lyrics down, all right? Because if we screw up at any point, we go back. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Kale, whenever you get. Hey, Kale, you're going to jump in too. We're going to Beastie Boys this. I go first. What am I. Wait, what do I say? Phil, and then Kale. Kale, don't fuck this up, all right? You can't screw this up for us, or we got to restart it. All right, Phil, light your cigarette. Get ready. Phil's getting into character. Just watch this. Phil's like a young fucking. Rapper man who's famous cool. in history. <laughs> Jay. He's like LL Cool J. It's cool. Alright, here we go. You ready? Yeah. On a dark desert highway. Listening to Kale's podcast. Go, Kale. Listening to my podcast. Sing! Listening Whisper to into my it. podcast. <laughs> it's Kale, you did this to yourself, buddy. Yeah. Uh. It won't finish till you get it right. All right. Don't stop till you get enough. Uh, you guys have been great listening to this. You're real troopers. <laughs> Phil, I fucking love you, man. I love you too, man. Kale, I love you too. I wasn't gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't give me time to talk. You didn't give me time to say stuff. I want to say thank you for having us on. You're welcome. This has been a blast. No, you've been a blast from the past. I know. Now I blow up. Oh, God. Are you okay? <laughs> Are you okay, Kale? On a dark desert highway. Listening to Kale's podcast. On KHC Network. No, I'm just kidding. No, that ladies, was actually pretty good. You, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, he actually nailed it that time, and I got scared. So uh, I if can't I do this on guess, uh, uh, I was trying to stay in tempo. He's, you, you did good. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Guys. Exorcist Bye. Three. Linda Blair, Richard Burton, Louise Fletcher, Max Vincito, James Earl Jones, Exorcist Two. The Heretic.